<laughs> oh, good word. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Hey. Hey. What up, dog? What up, player? Hey, go? man. So, look, I saw something in your story and I wanted to ask you about it. Let me know when you're ready. When you got I'll, your mind. I'm ready. ready whenever. I'm just doing the, you know, the last minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Send me the, the link. link. Send the link out. Oh, my boy, you know I got you. Let's go. Where is that right here? Um, paste. Boom. Yeah, you, you, you've seen the movie The Bang Bang Club, I take it, right? You, that's not you. Like, you remember that scene in the movie where they were, they were like, uh, one of the, one of the homies was like down on his luck, and he was asking the other home, "Hey man, just just let me get a frame, man. Give me one frame." Hey, that's kind of <laughs> that was kind of right. He's right. begging for a frame. that's kind of wild, bro. However, however, bro, off that shit that I saw earlier on your story, bro, I'm kind of like, "Hey yo, man, let me get one of them frames, cause I need something that say just straight up nigger in it, bro. Come that's on, the man. second time I shot something not down here that's like this." <laughs> I feel you. Just straight nigga, bro. That's I mean, I feel, I understand how how it could be um uh, mixed emotions running into that shit. But mm -hmm. I'm not bro. My first one would probably be like, yes. <laughs> my first one would be like that Yo, was man. not mine. Uh -huh. bro, I know. I, again, I know we, we got different programming. But I also that understand good. that I can get up and Take that picture and make that happen. But, uh, yeah. Honestly, I'm glad you made the move. Uh, that's a that's a that's a impactful moment. Honestly, especially like nowadays, kind of like hard to hard to see. Um, and somebody got to do it, bro. For those that don't know, if you present now or later, uh, in his story, he saw like a, a train car. He posted a train car. And it had the word uh Nigga. Yeah, but with the hard R. Um <laughs> uh it was it was graffitied onto a train car and I saw it and we caught we briefly spoke about it, but like I, I was I don't know off the phone real quick. I think I think I could tell that it's bothering you. That shit always bothers me, bro. That shit always bothers me. Because it's not like uh it's not it's not like you forget it or yeah. anything like that it's just it's like damn i went th this many days since the last racial incident type of meter in my head and then yeah i get it yo i get it i get it and it's like damn another hard reminder my boy that is some wicked shit, especially like to see like to really see i don't know uh i still think part of me would be really excited just to have it like in my my Stills index, but yeah, I get it. It's kind of fucked no, up. No, I, I like I said, I got a few of them, but I also understand because you you saying that not from malice, you saying that because you understand the power of a photograph. Mm -hmm. I get it, got it, get it. But it be it's always it's always a thing, bro. It's always a thing. But that's why we do what we do, right? That's a very 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 big uh, big fact. I started up uh, my selects section of uh, Silk. Yo, actually, uh, to sidebar real quick, do you have paper? I do. Like yeah. print paper? Yeah. I do. You got that, that cheap Canon stuff that's about. I have, have Epson Lust. You got the Epson paper stuff. Paper. All right. Listen, this is a serious question. Okay. Did you mail me about 20 sheets of paper? So let's not. <laughs> I'm not mailing you 20 sheets of paper, bro. We'll Come just, on. Uh, we'll I need, need, bro. need, I need we'll it. We'll just order a box of paper, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like, about to mail you 20 pieces of paper. That's just that. Bro, it's like, it'll be here in no time, man. You could even expedite it. Man, we can just order you some paper. Tell them serious documents, man. <laughs> Nah, for sure, fam. I just used my last 11 sheets to make 66 prints. I need that. 
I need 20 sheets of paper. Who are you? <laughs> Walter White, nigga. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 20 sheets of your premium luster sent to my crib ASAP. Stat. <laughs> Yo, what up, Ant? Thank you. You already know always a, a smoke section original, regular. You pop up. My boy, my brother. What up, Antonio? No Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. I was, yo, I was looking through my shit and I was like, damn, fam. Like, I really have come far with this Patterson project because I, I hate, like, well, I don't hate it. The first two years of work that I did, like, seriously in that, this direction. Mm hmm definitely one of those ones it's like you can see that i was trying to i could see that i was trying to figure it out and i could also see how uh it's come together a bit better um shit my whole it's like it looks like my vision is very clear right now um when it comes down to the shit that i'm making and the things that i'm trying to portray so it's exciting it's exciting stuff oh i know i know oh you knew you was right well, I wasn't going to say it, but you know. <laughs> Thank you, my boy. You got it. You got it. Anyway. Don't come when it was time. You're going to see. You're going to want to look at it different. And you all you had to do was be there. Got it. All you had to do was be there. Nah, fam. But I also miss, like, uh, like, these last two months, I've been, you know, redirecting the energy in a different space. But, fam. After going through my archive for the last two weeks, the streets is humming, bro. It's like it needs me back. <laughs> I need it back. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I'm tired of seeing like you know, not so much to say new work or old like newish work. I need to see uh, more of what I'm trying to say about this city. What you gotta do is be in the city. You know the vibes. Yeah, I know. And you know what's crazy about like you know going to places and just exploring this whole shit. Not to bring it back, but that's what happened when I saw that that nigger graffiti shit on the train. I was like, yo, let me just drive around. Like, I'm not ready to go to the crib. I'm just going to ride around. And I just, like, rode through side blocks and back streets or whatever. Fuck. And I can run this little roundabout. <laughs> not roundabout. A little curved corner looking thing. And I see the train. And immediately I saw the, like, the the, the, the graffiti piece on the side. Like, I was like, oh, that's kind of hard. Because, you know, me and my connection with graffiti. And then as I'm going down the trains, I said, oh, no. Nah. So that don't say, I said, that definitely say Nigel, don't it? That gotta say Nigel. <laughs> so that gotta say Nigel, bro. And yeah, he's putting on for the thornberries. <laughs> oh, this said Nigel, bro. So let me go see what's up. And I seen it. I was tight, bro. A family, a white family, coincidentally, was just walking past me on the other side of the street. I'd be like, hey, guys, you gotta, do you guys have a moment? Oh, you know, they are not gonna want to participate in that. <laughs> Damn, man, it'd have been worth a shot, bro. Listen, man, for one, it'd have been a great Dave Chappelle shout out for a photo. <laughs> God damn, that'd have been great. <laughs> like, but two, I don't know, man. Like, the, hold on, wait. So, did they see you before you saw them? Who the people? Uh, I, I, they were coming up the, the coming up the hill of the turn. Um, and I just happened to just hit my brakes like that. Then I put the car and got out. And when I seen it on the train and they were walking by while I was making the video. And then I picked my camera up, made the shot. Man, I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> Good afternoon. Would you wonderful folks mind a photograph? <laughs> Would you wonderful folks mind a photograph? Can I get you to stand right here? But not the, but it was pretty far away. You see, I had to like zoom in. Yeah, I know. I know. I'd have just zoomed in on their faces and had that shit right behind them. Like, have them all the way out of focus, but like, you'd have read the word nigger right between their heads. Nigger. That shit is crazy. Yeah. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Lobo. Mm, 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 mm. That shit this week. I was, I was woke up in a house move one day, fam. I was like, all right, yeah, we about to get some shit done today. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's how I be feeling about 
when I play some James Brown or something. Let me don't let the big payback come on. <laughs> Boy, yo, I just put Cameron on James Brown the other don't let day. Don't that shit come on in the in the in the little cipher. I was like, yo, all this little doofy shit you like listening to would not exist without this motherfucker right here. I need to, it's like, yo, I, <laughs> bro, we really grew up at a great time in history, yo. Yeah, I mean, the future is really in our hands, man. We got to teach the next ones the shit that we learned, like off rip. We have, to. hey, yo, Ed, since you're since you're the one here in the in the chat, uh, are you familiar? You familiar with with Daryl Davis, the author, historian, educator dude, bro? I don't know. Maybe you are West. I don't know. He put a documentary out in 2016, 2017. Uh, Accident to courtesy. I've been going down the rabbit hole since I found this man. Nah, you know I'll be on the outside of loops, bro. That's that's fine. Um, what what's, what's his accidental courtesy about? But <clears throat> he is a black man uh, who's been since the 1990 has been sitting down and having conversations with leaders of the of the KKK and oh, getting some of them to. Give it up. <laughs> oh, so, so we just got to visit the ones that he's visited already. No, we no, we ain't got to do nothing. He's doing his work. Yeah, but, but we, we know that those ones is kind of cool. Uh, now, some of them still believe in just a white, white race. No, I, I, thing, I, but they cool just, is, I didn't say cool isn't like I, I didn't mean cool isn't equal. I meant like cool, like you know, we about to pull up. Hey, just a heads up, man. We work. We work with BBC, man. We we want. They, they probably got a one Negro threshold. Fuck it. No. Just, we count for one. We a team. We like. We are both two different type of storms. No, 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 no not even. We just we one one rock that roll together. <laughs> I guess if they needed to come back to some evidence to see that we was good Negroes, they won't. They could use that, right? But yeah. um, say we down with them. Let me see what Aunt said. Aunt say something. Hey, yo, Anthony, uh, speaking of Anthony, we did. I watched World War Z last night, <clears throat> and I want to double down on ain't no fucking way you making it out. Because, <laughs> <laughs> boy, them motherfuckers meant business, bro. They made real serious business, and them shits was everywhere, and they was fast, bro. I don't think you, as soon as you fire off one shot from wherever the fuck you at, them niggas is on you. It's like they got radar, sonar, <laughs> niggar. <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, it's crazy. Nigga, it's crazy. It's <laughs> <laughs> <in> your opinion. <laughs> but he uh, was getting, he was getting people out of the out of the uh. Out of their hoods and robes, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Like they'll turn them in or whatever, give it to him when they get out the clan or whatever. And these are like leaders. He's breaking down what the colors mean, with the this and that. So he has also has a meeting with some of the um the Black Lives Matters activists in Baltimore. And uh they that was the only heated, real heated conversation that he had about the topic. It was with other black people. It was it's it's kind of crazy. It's, like, it's kind of crazy. I recommend you and everybody listening to go check out that documentary. It's not gonna make you walk around and like hating the world like some of them documentaries about race do. It's just it's very interesting. Oh, so it's not hidden colors. <clears throat> no, not not by a long shot. Um it is <laughs> it is it's interesting because he's using he's showing you that like these some of these people really just don't know another life they just like indoctrinated indoctrinated into this type of thinking always been around them some of them are even on the sense of like um you know like we don't hate black people we just want we still just want separate and equal stuff like why one dude was like why can't i just have he was like why can't i just have something for me like something for my people my white people like <laughs> yeah, that that was his frustration. Like, <laughs> see, it don't sound much different than what some black people be saying. It don't, and that's what that's the conversations he's having. Hey, yo, so does it does it like ah uh, man? Is there any? Is it anything like what is a woman? In a sense, 
in a sense, um, he's not. It's the long game of having people think about what it is they're doing um, okay. in this documentary versus how what in the woman uh, like what is a woman in that documentary? Um, people are being immediately confronted with okay. this door process, but it's in the same vein of them having to understand other viewpoints. Don't be so shielded, and it, and it goes for both black and white, but it's primarily on the KKK. He wants you to understand, like these people. He's like, yo, I don't respect their views, but it doesn't mean I don't respect them enough to sit down, have a conversation. He said it all came from a um, a question he asked himself. How can somebody hate me and they don't know me? Up until 10 years old, he was born in like 1960 or something like that. He said until 10 years old, he didn't know racism was a thing because his dad, his family was part of, uh, work, I think, worked a government job in the embassy. So he's every two years, they're in another country. So all his classmates are kids of different other, race other countries like you know and then when he would come back to the states he would be either schools were either just now becoming all of the, becoming integrated or whatever the case may be and um he would be either one of very few black kids in the school or sometimes the only black kid in the school and it wasn't until he joined the the, the cub scouts or something like that or the boy scouts one of the scouts and they were in the parade and people started throwing like rocks and bottles and cans and shit at him and he thought, oh, those people really just hate the hate the scouts. And till the teachers came over and hovered over him, he realized, yo, why is it just why is it just me? Mm -hmm. And then when he went home, all scuffed up, and he chopped it up with his parents. Parents asked him why he looked like that. What happened? Like, how did you fall? He was like, I ain't fall. People was throwing shit at me. <laughs> and then they had to sit down and had a conversation with him about race racism. I'm like, yo, what? He's an amazing musician, keyboard player. Fire, fire, dude. However, there's some shit going on. <laughs> I advise y'all to watch the documentary. I think it's not a waste of your time. All right. What was it called again? Accidental. Hold on. Accidental courtesy. Film about Daryl Davis meeting the KKK on gender race in America. On the race gender assumption is said in a long title, but just. Ain't no other thing called accidental courtesy. Accidental courtesy. Gotcha. Found it. PBS special. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Found it. Jorge, what's up, man? How you feeling? I ain't even seen he hopped in. Jorge, I saw you went to the, uh, what is it? The Brooklyn film camera shit at Wyckoff Windows, man. How was that? Well, nah, you didn't post it. I just got people everywhere. <laughs> Hope you had a good time. That's not creepy. Hey, don't worry about it, bro. Don't worry right. about it. You said you saw him. You ain't seen me. You ain't got no problem with that. Hey, bro. Listen, I'm like Bruce Wayne. If you saw the whole other side of my room, you'll see all the screens lined up watching all my news. It's kind of weird, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Right now, Dolo is in the range, uh, whipping down. Looks like. Twenty. Yep, I got his ass. You? I mean, I can see you. Habib, that nigga smoke. He literally taking the pull right now. I'm really AI, bro. Not really here. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was a lot. It was a lot in what sense? Like, uh, yeah, I seen, I seen the stories. God damn, six hundred people. And listen, that's wicked, bro. They got big pull. I got a bunch of followers recently because of them. So, shout out to Brooklyn Film Camera. Oh, also, if you guys are listening and you care to see anything that I've made, any work that I put up, uh, Brooklyn Film Camera has uh, some of my Polaroids on display for the rest of the month. Shameless plug. Ain't no uh, oh no, nah. you don't even bring shame or nothing. Just let them have it. <laughs> this is what was good. This is what's going on. On today's episode, we have two niggas on the couch. Two niggas on the couch. Wow. That is a lot of people, man. I mean, so what was actually happening at the event? I mean, it's it's not like it's not my it's not in my territory anymore. I can't just pull up. Was it just people bringing cameras out? Because I saw a lot of, you know, like, showy, showy camera shit. Hey, check out my 32 modifications on my one camera. What is 
Damn. Yeah, Wyckoff Windows is pretty lit. I um I displayed work there at the end of July. I think no, uh in August. I like that space. They have really, really nice um breathable space. Like I mean I, I can see how six hundred people could be a lot. We had like a hundred pull up for my show. Maybe two. Shout out to Carlos, he put that shit together. Hey man, you've been working on your book projects? Savagery. Why not, my brother? Why not? I'm doing the dad duty work. You're doing the duty. I respect it. All the prints are still printed out for the book. They're looking right in there, right there. Look. <laughs> oh come on man you gotta start making progress dog i want to see this shit by the end of the year the dad book might come before that i mean right now i'm still um making work at the same time as solidifying locations to one do the shoots for the st for the first part that i need like formally done in places to be able to exhibit the work i'm making sure i have them on board um and places where to sell both the merchandise and prints from the project at the same time i found two spots that seem to be well, i have if this was space i got two in the possible boy <laughs> got two in the possible what's up man you trying to make some dad duty merch boy trying to catch that what's up nigga? Catch motherfucking pockets, little headlocks and pockets. I can see a whole bunch of black men wearing dad duty shirts on dad duty. Yeah, they already got a lot of that. They do? Yep. Make it black. So a lot of that already. What I'm doing, I'm not the first nor well, I'll probably be the last motherfucker to document I, photographs yeah, about that. and, and you you incentivize you black fatherhood. You said what? You gotta youify it though. Well, yeah. I'm still figuring out what that looks like. Right now, I'm just making sure I make the work. I respect it. That way, I put that as priority because then I can have something um for uh, for Father's Day. Okay, I respect that. So I got people pulling up for that, and then come here. I got the whole year to do the dad duty project, at least off the grant, or with some of the help from the grant. Um, and that, that allows him that I'll have a halfway point and I got it and I could also gauge that as a temperature check to see how far along the project has gone. How can I introduce new people to the project that haven't had any insight that didn't know it was even going on? Might get a whole slew of fathers after the first uh, mixtape. I feel it. I feel it. I've been in I've been in that mode all damn day, bro. Woke up like fuck it, man. I gotta cook something. I um <clears throat> went through uh, my archive so far. I'm at like 150 selects. Mm -hmm. um, I was only able to print like half of it. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked you for those 20 sheets. You got me? I just need 20 sheets, bro. Bro, I'm not sending you 20 sheets. We're just going to get you a pack of paper, bro. All right. Fuck it. <laughs> um yeah, I'm about to line all that shit up. Let's that put together. What man? It's like, yo, let me borrow a piece of paper. Yeah, if I'm in the next room. <laughs> bro. <laughs> <laughs> let me get let me get uh, yo, just send me a, a pack of butter in the mail, bro. Let's get here. Send me a pack of butter in the mail, bro. <laughs> we ain't even gotta be all like that. I respect it. I appreciate the the escalation of the idea. Now, if they got a pack, a hundred pack for twenty, send that bitch, bro. Send up twenty dollars. Or uh, I know they got yo for whatever reason. If you go on Amazon, um, anybody that has a printer and cares to find some solid deals, you can get really good candy paper for 
stupid cheap on Amazon. The the what is it? The eight and a half by eleven shit. They they have a. I think the deal starts at like less than ten dollars for a fifty pack. I could be wrong. It's been a while. He said, I say it like it's rolling papers. I mean, I would ask him for that shit too. You got some extra papers you can send me? Actually, do you need papers? Because I know you in the South, bro. I know what's up. Is that they a yes? Got them. They just don't got the right size. What you need? Not the little mini elements. Them just be like I'm this. In the home of the, of the fucking, I'm in, the, I'm in the home of the smoke sections, bro. Like they got smoke shops every every five blocks over here. I believe it. I seen a thing in uh in the city, a store called THC. I'm like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of dope. And then it stood for something something chicken or something like that. I'm like, <laughs> chicken shack. Chicken shack with the weed name. Oh my I'm talking about back pain, anxiety, insomnia, <laughs> in the window. What's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't tell me they're using they using weed trigger words to to sell chicken. They, nah, that's to sell the CBD that they also sell alongside the chicken. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Seriously? Well, weed in general, they're not just CBD no more. It's New York. They they got the weeds. Yeah, they got the right. And that's why a lot of these bodegas and smoke shops and stuff getting hit up. Shit, my old bodega was lit, nigga. You get whatever you need there. Weed, mushrooms. I was confused, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? You get the grabo, you get any type of roll up you need. They had the mushroom edibles, the mushrooms, the chocolates. I'm like, dog. Oh, new world, bro. You heard Hove? They selling <laughs> weed stores. Can you believe that time? <laughs> One of my uncles, uh, my grandmother's brother, I think it was around Thanksgiving. I hope I didn't tell this story yet, but this nigga was going off how he used to he used to buy a kilo of weed. I said, a kilo of weed? A kilo? He said, yeah, me and my guys, we get that. We split that up and we start selling it together. I'm like, a kilo? <laughs> I'm like, damn, man, you come from a whole different time. Niggas wasn't even measuring pounds of weed. They had kilos of weed. Take this brown paper bag of stepped on dirt. <laughs> Get the most oh, you can oh, from oh, it. Magic happen. <laughs> switch you from right back. Why you got to switch from Moab? I don't know why you got to switch from Moab, man, but Moab is still the shit. I got a bro. Deep tweaking. I got the 17 by um, 17 by 22 Moab still. From when i first copped the printer mm -hmm. but i'm not running to, i wanted to use that to um to make prints like test prints but i was like <sighs> it just don't make sense too big way too big <clears throat> jim why you got to do the big switch and what are unless you switching you, unless you use that paper print that you got and size it up and then cut them out afterwards uh so it I want I wanted to only do that if I could like select like a multiple of, of X, you know multiples of X, you know what I'm saying? Like when you go through the print program, uh was it Canon professional shit? Mm -hmm. Um Canon print Canon Print Pro lab. Uh they give you options one, one print for no one, two, four, six. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So even with that larger paper, I'm still only getting six prints out of it. I wanted to do like some shit where it's like, give me like, like nah, you were, if they're test prints, you're, you're just gonna have to print it out of like um, uh, what is the shit, uh, like InDesign or InDesign's equivalent. You make that size, oh the fucking, and you put the photos on there yourself in size, and then you print it out at that size, and you just cut it yourself with the cutter. I don't want to make test prints out of fucking Moab, bro. Well, I'm in general, I'm saying at that size, they don't got to yeah. be. Moab. I'm just saying at that size. I totally would like. I'd rather just sell the Moab shit or you know put it on a wall. No, I'm with you, but I'm just saying any paper that you other paper that you have that size, that's a good way to think about making test prints. It's only be one sheet at a time versus, you know, I mean, 50, 50 left of them things. 
I mean, for a size comparison, this is what I got to start. Um, and this is what I, I like this. Like, rather than, you know, four by sixes, this, this is good. This mm -hmm. is good. I can make smaller test books and then, like, you know, fucking figure that shit out from there. But I wasn't trying to, I really wasn't trying to use my printer. However, you know, if Canon is 10 for 50. Hey, Moab is 140 for 100 sheets. Hey, man, Jim, promote more prints, bro. Promote more prints. <laughs> promote more prints. Yeah. Set them prints you taking. They all though they are wonderful portraits, my brother. Huh. Add a dollar sign, fam. Yeah, I make yeah, I make fun of uh OG Louie as much as you want to out there in them streets, but uh <laughs> <You ain't> hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Sure, hungry. He don't got to worry about his next meal. That motherfucker stand there and wait for it. Hey, look at that nice guy with the hat and the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty dollars. Get that ass. Shit. Film costs money. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Instax, Polaroid, Kodak. You name it. It costs money today. Ink cartridges cost way more for me, bro. So it's it's a serious game. Mm. I was thinking about doing a print sale, but I feel like I don't really know what to put out there right now. So I'll wait. We could talk about that separately. That's easy work. And I'm about to do a print sale too. Yeah. A couple of people asked us if I would sell the uh the Polaroids, but I'm still at no. So I need I need something else. I got a wall full of negatives I gotta go through and see what's what. <laughs> Excuse me. I got this shit right here plus the other wall of uh, 120. Mm -hmm. it's, it's literally just starting to look like like a fucking uh, King's workstation. <laughs> I got film draping around me and just adding to it. The table, I mean, for what it's worth, I, I, I think I made a dent in the work, but I still got like at least 20 rolls to go through and develop. Mm hmm. I'm looking forward to it though. It's it's uh, dude. I was kind of like hesitant when I did my first uh my first tank. I'm like, damn, it's been a minute. Gotta blow the dust off these old gears and see what's what. I'm actually just happy I ain't fuck nothing up. Like none of these uh none of these rolls got beat up by me developing them. You know, they may have been beat up through the journey of getting to the developer. Before, before we get too sidetracked, I want everybody to take a second and look out their window and notice that there might still be an inkling in the light outside at this time. I, want, I just want everybody to understand. <laughs> it is 6.37 p.m. And there's some light outside. Let me just add to that. All right. Go ahead, bro. I was I was fucking in the, in the tent yesterday harvesting around let's say 1 30. <laughs> as it came to my surprise after about 45 minutes in the tank i came out of the motherfucking tent to see that it was now 3 fucking 15. boy when the fucking time goes boy that shit really yo man i did not know that the clock guy was going, yo and I totally fucked up my energy for like at least the start of my day. I did a lot of shit, but like I, I was super tired the whole the whole way. I'm like, dog, what the fuck? I ended up falling asleep at what I thought would be like three or something, but it was really like four ish, close to five. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, I guess shout out to the sun being up, but damn, that shit fucked me up yesterday. Ticky, 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 ticky. Who are you texting? Damn, bro. Send them the, send them the security code. Sell them the clearance code is 5518. No, some people are actually asking me about um the train. Hmm. Shit. Go look it out, Ed. What's up? Uh, Ed just hit me up uh, saying she got me with some paper. Easy work. I need that. Thank you, Ev. 
Um, yeah, that keep the ball rolling, man. Keep the keep the energy flowing. Because realistically, bro, I just want to crank out these books of mine for the next uh, couple weeks at least. Wake up, smack a tab in the face, and just get creative. I really like, um, <clears throat> I don't know, I like the safety of my creative space. Well, and it's starting to look a lot more comfortable. The more I keep putting shit up on these walls, the more I'm like, yeah, this is what I've been waiting for. My boy's smoking, smoking. You straight? Taking a moment. What? <laughs> I gotta be. Damn, eyes low. Be like that. Nigga. So I've been watching this fucking show called From. Just finished it. You ever watch Lost? Do you fuck with shit that's just random? Like, it's kind of, so this, like, this, all right. I fuck with any story that's brave enough to like like kill off specific characters. Like a kid shows be scared as hell to like smoke a kid. This shit killed the kid the first five minutes. I was like, all right, put me on. <laughs> it's about fucking like uh this random ass town where people can't leave. Um uh, they got some random ass monsters uh that, that come out at night and they can't get into they can't get in, they kind of like got like sort of vampire-esque rules. They can't get into a house unless they're invited, but also every house that has like a amulet or a talisman or some shit like that, they can't get into the into it mm -hmm. unless invited. <clears throat> Bro, the story is it's it's it goes left, it goes right, flips it upside down. Like what the fuck am I watching? It involves time in weird ways. It's kind of cool. I would say give it a shot. It's it's one what season. Right um, it's not by like it's by Epics, which I think is like a, a stars stars uh channel. And the niggas, they don't got no gloves on, bro. They they not they not trying to please nobody and like make it to any foreign markets, bro. This shit gets crazy. Like you'll you'll love it. You like damn. Get a little world, see what's going on. But fuck, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's get straight to it. Season finale, Last of Us. Is that my negatives on the wall? Yeah, man. Some of it, yeah. <laughs> that, that nigga's punching the air right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn the light on, man. It's getting dark. Yeah, nah, dude, I'm I'm playing catch up, fam. I can't. I mean, I don't, I don't have any film cameras to go crazy right now. Oh, you watch that shit? Let's fucking go. Jorge, know what it's about. I'm not gonna say it's so it's not too much like lost, but it definitely you could taste the lost in the fucking formula. But that's also because it's it's the people that that like uh some of the producers that worked on lost put together this story. So what it seems like is they took notes from what they fucked up on with lost and applied it to a better story. Cause boy, shit goes there. Oh, well, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Put it to the list because I really want to still have this conversation. About the season finale. Oh, the yeah, yeah. Let's get right. Now, I'm feeling like. You think they're going to deviate from the, the source material? Nah. The storyline yeah. too good. <laughs> the storyline too good. The original game storyline too good. They're not going to slide off that. However, they already got greenlit for season two. My most interesting part of the of that whole series, if you will, is their connection together. I think I'm getting mad because I know sooner or later, Joel dies. This is a reminder of how much closer we about to get. <laughs> Spoiler alert. To, now, if you played the game, you played the game. If you haven't played the game, where you been? This shit got remastered. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But 
when they kill, I feel like they're gonna get getting closer to killing my mans, and I don't want them to ever get this. So. I mean, Seeing that we had the hospital already is just like, damn, bro. But wait, there's more. You know he's still going to get some type of money, bro, from the next season. Flashbacks. No? No flashback money? Actually, no, they never really – they didn't have many flashbacks. Oh, yes, they did. They had a whole flashback episode, two flashback episodes. No, they ain't got no flashback episode. I mean, he's going to be in season two, Um, I feel like, but he's going to die in season two, and then we're going to get – be all right. Yeah, I know it's gonna be all right. The story's still great. <laughs> nah, you sound you sound like you hurt. Uh, that, that's that's a different yeah, type of book. Yeah, I am because those was the most interesting character flips. Because the next big character flip for me with Ellie is when she smoke home all that shorty's friends and families before she get to her. Yeah, I feel that. That's the next time I'm like, yeah, Ellie, get busy. So <laughs> I'm re I'm ready to get my mind ready to see that in live action. <laughs> that's gonna be so fire bro do you yeah. think that, all right so i got a question do you think was this 10 episodes you think 10 episodes was enough to tell season one or uh, part one yeah yeah because the they they did they did really good character development building this up but then early on, let you know they're not afraid to, to let you know that how much time has passed since then. Like, yeah, it was months, and we're not gonna show you. Like, it was just months. <laughs> like, so you already groomed the thing. Like, all right, so it could easily just get all of that. They just they use that to to compact it all into this right here. You get the relationship of Ellie and Joe not liking each other to kind of liking each other to having to depend on each other, and now y'all like this whole unit thing. I mean, anybody that hold me down after I get stabbed up and after the world is all over and find penicillin in the world, I fucks with you. <laughs> I fucks with you. So if I, you can find penicillin in a in a in a, a medicine list world, yeah, we family now. And I, what, what, what he said? they moved through the story real quick. I like that they are milking it like The Walking Dead, and I think that's why they did it because you start looking like other zombie movies and shows when you have to start explaining all that other what did they pick the right berries and did, who had to go out and who was doing the lane we ain't doing all that i feel you yeah. did they pick the right berries <laughs> things like that because now everybody got a green thumb in the end of the world i mean damn not realist i feel like in that in that circumstance you probably like you you probably have to find out within the first year and some change i mean they 30 years down the road bro they gotta know what the fuck the right berries are at this point i hope so but you know they, right. are, they there's still room for some people to not know people was in there eating people you, yeah you think damn you, <laughs> people was in there eating people i'm sure they was picking the wrong berries bro you got a point <laughs> you got a point but even how they did those scenes last week in last episode with oh uh, when oh uh, boy that was really that was really hey they getting some awards somewhere bro <laughs> they getting some awards somewhere you know this is this is really fucking dope i could agree actually fucking uh speaking of, of awards uh i'm sorry i gotta do it to you again but from got critical acclaim dog i'm gonna check, hey, check it out I don't know what even drew me back to it, bro. I just was like, fuck it. Put it on. Fam, if the first five minutes don't get you, or first ten minutes don't get you, shit, man. I don't know what will. It's not exactly a zombie but you, but you know me. You know me already. I like movies and shows where they murk off people you don't expect to get murked off. That's how Game of Thrones got me. It's I, real. And then if you look at The Last of Us, first episode. Yeah. Sarah up out of here. Bro, I was so invested in the fucking little black girl, bro, and then she got smoked. Oh, man. Well. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you could. What's up? We don't have a guess. We got a guess? I don't know, man. They want to get on the chat. Uh-oh. Yes, what's up? Jump in. Who's next up here? Let's go. 
Go, 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 go. Did they repost this again or what the hell happened? Oh shit, Polaroid Asia. Nice. Oh, my boy finna change his life. Hey man, can I hold a crumb, please? Shit, man. I just asked you for 20 pieces of paper, dog. <laughs> <laughs> hold a crumb, please. <laughs> that gotta put some things in perspective. <laughs> he said that gotta it gotta do it, huh? <laughs> Yo, nah, season so yo, season two of From is coming out actually this month or next month, yo. I think uh, I think it's at April twenty third, nigga. I was like, I was hoping that this would be like a one and done show, but once it got to the end, I was like, man, they totally got me. Like how Lost got me, bro. The ending is very, 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 very much in the vein of how like the first season of Lost. I think season one ended with them finding some some fucking hatch. It was going crazy over this hatch for mad long because a light turned on and somebody saw it and it was like, oh, we're not alone. Nigga, the end of this shit is crazy. I'll check it out, man. Yeah. I was, I've been watching, laugh if y'all must, but I've been re-watching Samurai Jack. I don't know why I seen it in the app and I was like, I'm going to watch it. I'm not gonna judge you, man. You, you find what you need to in there. <laughs> I like that shit. That shit's pretty interesting. Watching it as an adult versus when I was younger. Cause then I, then Adult Swim brought it back and made it more adult swimmy. You feel me? Okay. Okay. So did I'm, you get to that part yet? Like, yeah, I'm see seeing the switch. Okay. Switch. Do you do you think that the professor is Jack? Nah, but I wish it was. <laughs> I feel you. It would make for, it makes for a good theory, right? I then I started thinking about who would they get to play this as a live action movie because you know that's the next step for everything. Because the story about mean. Samurai Jack is pretty fire. Well, he go to the past and got to come back. Well, everything leading up to before he even. It's his responsibility. The story is fire. Like his dad <laughs> originally fought Aku and trapped him in there, and then had this sword on the mantle all these years for the day he returned, and then he returned. <laughs> and the pops, <laughs> <out there, laughs> the pops was trying to go give him that work, but he sacrificed himself so the wife could get him out of there. And she took the sword and she hid away, and he had to go train with different masters yeah. to prepare him for his fight with Aku. And yeah. my boy, when he got there, he was more than ready. Bro, this was <laughs> not in the first one. Yes, it is. That's how it starts. Nah. Yes, bro. That's in the original Cartoon Network. That's the original Network, the Cartoon Network storyline. That's the first episode. Is he a kid? kid uh, Jack is a kid. It's his. He's a, a kid. That's when he's. That's the first time we see our cool and his dad sacrifice himself. Not sacrifice as a uh, dead. Sacrifice himself to be enslaved. So that the wife could get the sword and Jack out of there. Go watch yeah. it. Dude. Go take a look. <laughs> Go watch it. The storyline fire, bro. Like I'm uh, like, oh shit. Like having... as a kid, I, as a kid, I didn't even give a damn about all that. I just wanted to see the fighting, and then I like that it found the way to bring silence for most of the episodes. <laughs> it was one of the, it was like silence, and then you'll hear like a yell or a shuffle of shoes or some wild shit. And I'm sitting here like, yo, we really sat through this, like. <laughs> I don't remember it. See? It's fucking wild. All right, I'll, I'll see what's up. I tried to do, well, I started up with Teen Titans again, just because the I wanted to just one? make it. Huh? The live action one or the OG animated? The OG animated. I want to see what's up. I want to go through the, the roller coaster again with fucking Beast Boy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the whole shit with fucking uh, Red X. Slate Robin losing his fucking knocker for a little bit. That nigga went crazy trying to find him, find himself. <laughs> I love how Red X don't exist nowhere else but in that show. Had to give more of that. If they give it ten minutes, say least, Brody. Yeah, I gotta get a bomb. Okay. Yeah, fam. I need something, something else. I feel like I've been rolling up too much. Hey, man, don't be moshing up the portrait, yeah. 
I'm not mashing up the porch. This shit is safe. It's safe, brother. It's safe. All right. All right. That's sne- is- that snake eye print sold the other day. Nice. That's a good one. I like that one, man. Damn, it's been a minute since I sold a print. Hey man, somebody in this this uh this chat buy a print. Word, prints are always available, y'all. Don't ever think they are never available. Don't wait for a print sale to say you would like a print. If you got an idea for a photo that you think I might not have, put it in the chat. Thousand price. <laughs> put it in the chat. <laughs> 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 see what's up. See if I got that shit. And if I got it, you gotta buy it. That's funny. I bet you if you ask for a unicorn, I'll find a photo of my shit. Hey. Lord knows I'd find one. <laughs> Nigga said, some people fish, but me, I hunt. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to that photographer out there (coughs) doing special. I know you're doing great, fam. (coughs) He said, but me, I hunt. Sometimes water just touches so a little, a little dip. Drink more water. Shout out to Mick Jenkins, y'all. Drink more water. I was listening to him earlier. That's my nigga. The great fucking uh, project. I've actually seen him perform like four times, bro. And it's it's been quite random. I'm not gonna lie. One time it was like he was performing in uh, Prospect Park. Uh-huh. Two other times, like it was just like random shows I pulled up to, and. Uh, I think there was one that I paid up, paid for. Hey, yo, what up, nigga? Ladies and gentlemen, Ebony. <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, in the meantime, let's uh, should we do an introduction? Ebony hails from Chicago, Illinois, where she yeah, <laughs> she can do her own intro. Come on, get your ass on the screen, woman. What are you doing? If you wasn't ready, there we go. There we yeah, go. So, uh, yeah, you know, y'all know I be getting my lightning shit together and shit. What's up? What up, Ebony? Ebony? Uh, nothing. <laughs> life. Lights or life? Life. Life oh. and life. Life like Jennings? What kind of lights you got popping off right now, too? What is this you got? What? Is this a regular light or this is a photo light? What do you have? Oh, it's like a, it's a lamp. <laughs> oh, fine. That shit lighting, boy. It could working. What's up with you? Happy Sunday. Oh, happy Sunday. How y'all doing? Oh, you over there looking like you selling Adidas. What's up? Wow. Did it fall off the back of a truck? <laughs> no. Marshalls. Marshalls. Oh, I, I so you know, Marshalls is all right. Hell Marshalls yeah. The back of a truck. I feel it. This was $7. This was $10. This was $7. <laughs> $7. <laughs> hey, man. Yo, I was in the mall yesterday. Saw some Asian chick wearing some, some slides. That a crackhead told me that she got from the dollar store. Mm-hmm. So I, was like, I was like, "Damn, fam, we took these shits to the mall." Sheesh. Hey, I don't care about y'all because I don't want to hold shit. Oh, moving around like I'm crazy. Uh, I'm trying to see what can I use to hold all of this together. Yeah, let me see. Can y'all see me? Negative. We see you, but not you. 
Okay, that's what I'm trying. I see this little circle. I don't want that lame thing on there. Well, fix it. Get the lame thing on there. Yeah, hold on. Okay. There you yeah. go. Hey. hey. I know, right? I, yeah, I feel like most of America got the same accent, and the Northeast Coast got the wildest one. Boy, you need to come listen to the folks down here. I ain't gonna hold you. That's the shit. You feel me? That's that's the shit. That's the shit. Most people, most people from like the South to the West Coast, they sound like they in the South. You go to LA, niggas in LA sound like they in fucking Decatur. <laughs> <laughs> She sound, she sound like she she in Atlanta right I'm now. Because my accent, like that's just you know, my my whole family has the accent for some reason. Like we have this accent. People be like, "Where y'all from?" Like we from like I was born in Chicago. I'm, you know, but like it's just they. I don't know what it is. People be like, "Where you from?" Like when I was a kid, like I don't know. It's it's crazy because genetics actually play a factor in that because like everybody town has like a you know. If I got twenty on it, that most Chicago people don't have. So it's keep, like we've been to the places you know that our families are really from, you know. So I don't know. So does everybody else in Chicago talk like Chief Keith or something? It, like. I don't have a Chicago accent. I'm born and raised in Chicago, but my accent is it's never been ever been like a Chicago accent. Okay. Okay, so most people from Chicago sound like Kanye West. Like Kanye West is like he is that nigga from North. Huh? That nigga he lived in North. No, he lives. No, I, I know his old I'm child. With you. I'm child. With you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, um, he's about to take you somewhere, my boy. Give me out the food. Um, you doing now? What y'all doing? You hear me? Yeah. Yo, when you picked that up, I thought that was like a can of like cheese spray or something. I didn't know what she grabbed. So I was trying to look for the little nozzle piece. Like, yo, is she about to eat? This uh, is, this is not a goofy movie, bro. Huh? This is not the a goofy movie. People do that apparently, bro. Still? I thought that was a 90s thing. Yeah. Day. I don't know. People still eating cheese out the can and all that. <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but they doing it. It's very comedic of them, honestly. I, I've ever seen somebody just straight a cheese can. I mean, I've seen somebody do whippets in public. I, I hope I think you've seen that that clip go out before, but but like, nah, never cheese. Never seriously. Nah, some people, some people like it, bro. Okay. What cheese? Cheese out the cheese out the, the can like the cheese whiz. Oh hell no, nah, this is some beer. <laughs> what kind of beer are you drinking, yo? Um Hopewell. Who? Going places. Oh wow, I've never seen that before. It looks nice. Nice can. It's great. If I'm if I'm getting beer, I'd probably fuck with like a victory beer. Like uh they got this shit called uh I think crazy monkey or some shit like that. It's pretty hard. Uh, golden, okay. golden monkey. Mm -hmm. Two of those that have you on your ass. Yeah. So is this part of your self-care Sunday app? Oh well actually I just got off of work about two hours ago. So what that don't mean you still can't have a self-care Sunday, it's still Sunday and you still self and take care of it. That's so right. You're uh, oh my god! Goddamn right, I'm right. I can't remember the time I was goddamn wrong. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> but y'all, y'all doing self care Sunday too? Yeah, I've been taking care since I woke up. Shit. Right. One more call after this, and then it's bubble baths, my boy. I got my candle. I'm chilling. Yeah. I can't wait till I'm back in bubble bath season. It's been a hard sacrifice this year. 
Yeah. But it's all right. Because my drive to the walls going to be 360. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's all right. We make sacrifices here. What's up? <laughs> Hmm. Well, yeah. that's good as long as you have as long as you take care of yourself today you do something you like feed your soul a little bit yeah the good way to go at least that's how that's what i think anyway y'all out there watching y'all can go oh, ahead and I put, like put what y'all doing for self-care sunday in the chat my fault Ed, what were you saying no go ahead no i was just telling people in the chat they go Type in what they got going on for self care Sunday today. Oh, hey, so look, I got a story for y'all, right? Mm. So you remember, got to start it off, I so boom. Huh? You got to start your story off with I so boom. Crazy, like. Okay, so look. On my last two off days, I call myself going to. 43rd and 47th here in Chicago. Um, and like there's like this gentrification thing going on, like crazy, right? But it felt weird. It felt weird. Um because like you know, everybody's on edge, right? Everybody's on edge, and it's like I'll come, I wanted to document the air because I'm like, man, it, I mean, when I tell y'all, it's like, let, I'm, I'm going to explain to y'all, like, it's like a new development building, right? Condos, all glass windows, floor up, right? On the next lot is the old train station full of like the e bottles, yeah, damn, um, Newport, you know, Newport boxes. You know, all kind of just lick a red roll, raw rolls, all that stuff, right? It's crazy. But right next door is this beautiful building that they're building. It's windows, every every unit, the windows are floor up, right? Bro, it's crazy, like how like just like the the difference is like like feet for real. Like within feet, two total different sides of the world so i went there and i um you know i was walking around on my camera and stuff but after a while i just stopped um i stopped because like i didn't want to be doc I, I okay so it was this one guy i took a picture of i asked him that's the one i posted uh, um, I'm on my stories a couple days ago. I asked him or whatever, but I just felt weird documenting because I felt like I wanted to document or take pictures of people in like a vulnerable state because it's something about like when gentrification happens in neighborhoods. It's something. It seems to be like a very like strong force of drug, drug usage in the area. So like all on these blocks or whatever like literally i'm talking about people on knives people just you know what i'm saying just out of it and it's crazy to me because that's always what happens like when there's gentrification there's always like a, a epidemic of drugs you know going on at the same time and so towards the end of the block they got this condo building up it's it's probably made maybe like 50 units or whatever it's just a big ass building new construction they still working on every unit has windows from the floor up right so it's kind of like it's and then like feet away from that like i'm talking like less than 50 feet away from that there's like a landfill and it just and i just i just felt so like i got sad i got sad um because i remember how it used to be you know what i'm saying like for like during the 90s you know on these same strips or whatever it was black on businesses you know people was doing good right mm -hmm. and like now it's totally not that so 
I was just saying that to say that I find myself, you know, get trying to get back to, uh, you know, the street photography thing or whatever. I, I just I couldn't even I couldn't even get through it. I couldn't even get through it. Like I know when I started drove off. I would say ask yourself this question is it true what's true what you're seeing you, you mentioned like very weird <laughs> now you you mentioned that you you wanted to shoot but you didn't want to photograph people in a vulnerable spit uh vulnerable state yeah you yourself is that the truth of the moment are you making them vulnerable or oh i feel, I feel... say your question one more time so i can make sure we're on the same page well, I mean, when it comes down to the deciding to press the shutter or not, <clears throat> you got to ask yourself. I mean, you're not you're not putting them in that position. You're not staging anything. You know, is what you're photographing truthful? You know, it doesn't really. I mean, it, some truth hurts. You know, sometimes the truth hurts. Truth does make people sad at times. Um, shit, it makes people happy at times. But if you keep a baseline of 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 like fact in your work then i mean i i would say it, i want to do it huh i want to do it yeah, I so do document it because there's no like when i go out there there's nobody else around like you don't if you notice have if you all have taken notice of this i'm a i'm point this out you can look look up look it up later or whatever but you don't really see a lot of street photographers like you don't really see a lot of chicago and there's a lot of photographers in chicago but they don't hit those areas right but then you'll have like i guarantee you now you'll have like three years from now you'll have like you know the ny Times will sponsor Stephen shore to come here and do the same thing that i've been seeing before you know what i'm saying he even came here so, so do even think of, hold on don't don't even think about what they about to do I think you need to do the work do the work just do the work in me to do it but i'm trying to grab or try, i'm trying to self reflect within myself as as a, a, a visual you know mm -hmm. i want to be very careful about how i go about documenting things so what's your plan yeah, so just so, be careful to do it. Do exactly what I said. Think about it more and to and to you know self-reflect and it's and like get together a story that I'm trying to tell because I don't want to just I want to have a purpose. Like I don't want to just go over it. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, I, would, I would hope so. Where like I did the other day, I only got a portrait of one guy. You know, he's looking at the um, camera, but I actually, you know, asked him and he said, hey, my name is Richard or whatever. I'm like, I'm Ebony. He was like, are you a photographer? I'm like, I'm just a hobbyist photographer or whatever, whatever. So of all the shots that I took and I only got one of him looking, you know, at me because like, I like when I, if I, if I, if I go in the area and I take portraits of people i want them to be looking at me so they're acknowledging that a picture is being taken and sometimes i notice that some people don't do that but but it's i want to do that i want to like be able to get portraits or get like you know the scenery around or whatever but actually like you know what i'm saying have the person looking at me you know like I don't want to like take a picture of like somebody on a nod in the middle of the street and just you know i'm not doing that so talk to the people evan I, and that's what i'm trying to that's what i that's that's what i need to work on like i deal with people every day or whatever i deal with the public but it's it's like i'm doing like when i deal with the public from i'm doing a service to them they're more accepting of me because i'm doing like a service for them how you figure your photography is not doing a service that's a good question y'all always hit me <laughs> this is something you could do bro y'all yeah, really? hit me y'all y'all ask me questions that i'm like okay let me get that answer because i don't have the answer right now i just don't like that same interaction you had with the gentleman that you got the photo of to ask you if he was a photographer or not review that interaction what can you 
Okay. What happened in that that allowed you to be able to have access to that person for that time frame? Think about how what you said. Did you mean? Did you did did you take a genuine interest in what they had to say? Did you did you initiate the conversation or did they initiate the conversation? Well, he did actually. He did. All right. Well, that's one. Sometimes it goes that way. And some, you know, you know, trying to. But yeah, he did ask me. He saw my camera, or whatever, or whatever. So that is how I, you know, got that or whatever. But I took like some kind of environmental fortress too. Like I feel like with this particular thing documenting Chicago in general, I feel like there's like environmental poetry needs to be incorporated into it, not just the people, because you want to get the people, you want to get the environment. But like the gentrification thing, like y'all want I, man, it's it's crazy. I'm gonna and recommend I'm, that you, you should you should uh I'm really seeing it and not just seeing it i saw it before but this is my first time seeing it and actually like having like a sense of empathy sympathy for what's going on because like, so, so, like i've seen it earlier social media wasn't like as as advanced and wasn't as informative you know and, and, and like social media, like and, and the news and stuff, just kind of makes you look like a little closer. You know what I'm saying? Feel something. Look, if anybody I'm gonna understand? Familiar is definitely somebody from the tri-state area. Okay. <laughs> Brooklyn, it's not the same Brooklyn I knew or expected it to be, and I'm sure Wes could say that about Jer parts of Jersey. Yeah, it's not. It's the name of the game, so I can understand if this is like still new to you seeing that. So I guess I can get your, I can get your shock and experience in that. But it's not so much of me. Like I said, it's not so much of me seeing it for the first time. But it's, it's a, it's the first time that I've actually like I'm paying more attention to the basics. You know, it, that means you care. It sounds like you care. If you genuinely care. Yeah. I, say, I say just work with the people in this aspect honestly if you yes. want to frequent that area frequent that area talk to the people there's nothing wrong with talking with people and not making the photo there's nothing wrong with that bro okay there's nothing wrong with that you can talk to them and learn something from them because they're going to be there another day and you're going to be there another day right okay. but it's about you caring that's all I mean, yo, I got I got a couple recommendations. For one, uh, start along the path that you Hold deliver. On, me to. Second. One second, okay? Got to check. We got to end soon. All right, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, guys? Hey, we're back. This is good. And this sunny is with the weather. Hey, so it is dark outside right now. Well, the sun is going down. And it is seven seven i'll take that i'll take that i'll take that because it would have been dark a minute ago i mean it's, you know what how it's gonna be man it's yeah but I, I i love it that means <laughs> once the weather get a little better you know what that mean i'm outside with it yep 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 i'm gonna go get a bottle of beer and walk around the streets looking like they're drunk drunken monkey style photography here they thought your boy was they thought your boy was shooting, shooting before. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, Ebony, yeah. I got my advice to you or a piece of advice would be this. Um, for one, start start where you're where people are familiar with you. Okay. Whether it's the route that you drop off mail to and you just want to take portraits of the folks that you already know. Okay. Cool. It's a good like it's a good warm up. You know, it's a good it's a good way to break the ice mentally. Where it's like, all right, cool. These people ain't gonna eat my face because I'm holding the camera and asking a question. You know, you gotta really just take time and adjust to that. Now, also when it comes down to um that that question, that that inner confrontation, because I used to deal with that shit too. You um so, of course. Uh I mean, I, I I got through it by understanding that I'm not hurting somebody. Oh wow, I, mean, yeah. I got I got through it by understanding that like I'm not I'm not putting people in a position 
uh, to hurt them. Usually the way I make work now is like, is to, to highlight people, not to, to like bring down a moment. Even if it's some sad shit, I'm gonna make it look happy, you know? Um, but that's, that's just my personal approach to what I'm doing. You're gonna have your own touch to it. It's gonna be however you make it, but you also, you just gotta get used to it, you know? Like you're, you're feeling, all right, don't worry about what the New York Times is gonna do. Worry about what you're gonna do. That part. If you yeah. see it, if yeah. you see it in front of you, like if you see the the, the moment right there, your your photograph isn't gonna change the moment. The moment is truthfully happening. You not you didn't walk up to the the situation and say, "Hey, do me a favor and and look down." You know what I'm saying? Like you know you didn't you didn't stage anything. You're making an actual observation. And yet it is conflicting, but I, I would like to encourage you to actually shoot in those moments because Hold on, y'all. Not to fuck up what y'all got going on. I know y'all got the flow of things, but I'm gonna end the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for chilling with us. But Eb, stay with us. We're gonna just have the post session convo out after this. All right, so, all right. Thanks Peace. for joining. Peace. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Peace. tell your mama about us. <laughs> have self-care Sunday, Sunday self-care Sunday. Take care of yourselves, yo. All right. Bye.